Anticipation mounts as a 100-ton explosion is about to begin. It's the start of an international scientific experiment involving over 20 countries. Five, four, three, two, one. I was thinking that we would get the shock wave. We got it's something. Here. I felt because something. I could see it, uh, could see the dust, yeah. and then we start, the, yeah. yes, uh, yeah, up here, there. But if you would, we would have had some some bushes here, and, uh, we would have seen. I don't know if it's mine. Understanding how sound, or rather sub-audible infrasound waves, travel in the atmosphere is what's brought Patrick Grenard and scientists from around the world to the Negev Desert in Israel. Patrick works for the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization. It's running the experiment. And this detonation of conventional explosives is just the first step. In winter, the uh, stratospheric winds are blowing to the, to the east. And, and therefore, we wanted to monitor in the region how and the uh, sound generated by this kind of explosion would propagate. People cannot hear the low-frequency waves emitted by the explosion, but they are recorded by the CTBTO's network of sensors as they travel across continents. So we have 100 tons of explosive, we blow them, and then it's uh, arriving to the stations. The stations hear it, and we can measure the time that passes between the explosion to the time that we record at the station. And we can compare it to the models that we have. The data gathered will help to calibrate the sensors that detect nuclear tests in the atmosphere worldwide. Portable stations were erected in 15 countries in the Middle East region and beyond to capture the blast's infrasonic signal. Okay, so, Emil, so what have we received so far? Uh, we received I guess from, I um, from Jordan. Jordan. Okay. From uh, Greece. Greece, okay. Um, well, let's, I'll send this and then gonna, they're going to reply from Djibouti, uh, Kuwait, and Oman, Qatar. They should all have been recorded by now, something. Okay. I'll send this to them. Sergei, Sergei replied. Armenia. Yeah. Armenia. Spets, Armenia. Spets Armenia, yes. It takes a little under three hours for the silent waves to reach Kazakhstan. It's the first permanent CTBTO infrasound station to detect the signal. The data are sent in near real time to the organization's Vienna headquarters for analysis. So far we had uh, three of our main uh, international monitoring system stations that have picked the event quite nicely. Russia, Kazakhstan and Mongolia, which is 6,500 kilometers away from the experiment site. So this is quite fabulous and ensure the sensitivity of our international monitoring system infrasound equipment. The experiment will help scientists to fine-tune how they interpret infrasound waves to better pinpoint the location, time and whether indeed it might point to an atomic explosion. And we can look into both the radionuclide signal and the, and the infrasound signal to figure out whether an explosion is just a chemical explosion in a, in a mine or something which from the point of view of the uh, uh, prohibition of nuclear weapon tests we will have to look into. Infrasound interpretation is a young science. This wealth of new data will help keep those who monitor it ahead of the game to better detect any violators of the treaty that outlaws all nuclear tests.